This is season number 19 of Bass Talk Live with Matt Pangrak. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Aftco, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Baits, Spro, X Zone Lures, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Pro Guide Batteries, Beatdown Outdoors, Shoreline Boat and RV Repair, and Omnia Fishing. Hit him with the hook, Jeffries. PTL, coming at you. Yes, it's a miracle. We have live BTL in action. Folks, if you have been following the uh, debacle that has been my server for the last two days, you've gotten small portions of BTL shows, but hopefully we have an impromptu BTL show tonight. And I got on the horn and I called up one of the guys that I just like to hear tell fish stories. I mean, I was, I was sitting in the living room and I was watching a little New Jersey Devils ice hockey. Thinking about getting ready for Lake Eufaula and the Bassmaster Open coming up in Alabama. And I said, you know what I want to do? I want to tell some fish stories while well, I live alone. And all my friends are like married with kids. Our guest tonight is married with kids too. But uh, I was like, dude, uh, let's tell some fish stories with Jordan Lee. There he is right there. Let's... uh. Let's bring him back in that way. Go horizontal with your uh, with your camera there, Joe. I got you. Yeah. What's popping, what, Matt? What's yeah, up, thanks. dude? Thank you for literally five minutes ago you were inside enjoying dinner, and now we're uh, now we're telling fish stories on BTL. Yeah, man. Kids, uh, kids in bed, and I was gonna come out here anyway, so I was you. You hit me up, and I'm like, yeah, sure. Oh, I mean, it's all good, dude. Good to hear from you. Okay, I'm. Reg- I'm sorry. Your kid's name again is. It's Baker. Baker. Okay, so now we can refer to him as Baker instead of kid. Yeah. And and I believe last time you were on the show, how old was Baker? Uh, he was probably a year. I mean, it hadn't been that long. You had me on pretty recently before yeah. the year started. It was right after the the BPT announced the five. Yeah, the, the five, five fish, fish limit, and you talked about that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he's you know he's around fifteen, sixteen months. So he's you know you're in year and a half year and a couple months are they talking at this point like can you tell if baker likes fishing yet well it's still kind of young i mean you know he's just still trying to get his bearings straight i mean he likes birds he likes you know certain things but yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not like he's not like tying polymer knots you know on the front yeah. deck of the boat, rigging up my rods or anything yet but um so you you had to be happy to see how things went down because you were one of the guys. I remember when you were on last that was like five fish, five fish, five fish. Like it was pretty adamant. And I mean, guys were pretty adamant that like, dude, like one of the big reasons we did this was because Jordan Lee wanted to do it. And, you know, Jordan kind of pulls some weight based on what he's done. I mean, were you not behind the scenes, like pretty influential and hey, let's go back to one, two, three, four, five and see who's got the five biggest? Yeah, I mean, I I wanted to get guys, you know, like input on it all. I wasn't like, I wouldn't say I'm the reason why, but me and some other guys, we wanted to just get the bulk of guys' opinions and all that. Like, I, I feel like maybe I was the right guy for it because just to I feel like you're in interview mode. This is BTL at night, Jordan. We're just having a yeah. discussion here. That, that was such an interview answer. No, I, no, seriously though, like so. When, when guys reach out to me, I'm like, I felt like I was like the dude who was like, okay, well, if nobody else is going to do this, I'm going to yeah. send out some surveys. I'm going to take some initiative and just see what guys think. Because, I mean, if everybody, if, if it's just me that thinks this, then I don't. You know, it's what, like 70%? And, you know, it was like 60-something probably. But, hey, I was, I'm not going to lie. During the derby, I was, people were like, you know, some of my buddies, you know, Mm -hmm. close friends were like you know how's it going or whatever and i'm like i don't i can't i don't really know i'm just fishing it but i'm like i'm honestly a little nervous about it i mean because yeah i mean i'm like pretty i mean hardcore about this i'm like i wanted to change i thought it'd be good for us but during the tournament i'm like kind of you know not nervous yeah a little nervous like man i hope this is going good on on live you know hope 
I mean, it, but it was a freaking blowout. So there are two things that they did. You made it to five fish limit. And then you also did the, the final two days, the weight carries over. Yeah. And I don't, I wouldn't say it looked like a disaster, but it did not look like it would be entertaining going into that second day. On the final day, you mean? Yeah. Because it was carried over. Yeah. The yeah. second day of the final day. And Mark Davis had like 30 something and he had a 10 pound lead. Yeah. But I knew, I, I so I knew that lead, 10 pounds, you look on paper, but I knew the weather we had coming in. I personally knew, I know where Mark was fishing because he was fishing beside me, close to me, and I knew that was going to be trash. And I know in Florida, there's no lead. You've seen it. There's no lead that's safe. You've seen 10-pound leads get blown down there, you know, multiple times. So, yeah, you thought, hey, he's got this, but, I mean, I hated it for Mark, but it was an awesome way to start the year for us. It, it, I've got Chris on tomorrow on BTL, and it could not have gone any better. No, it could not have gone any better because we needed that momentum. I say we is the, the league needed that momentum after a change where you get a lot of flack. You get not a lot, but a little bit, fair to say. So, I mean, it was awesome. It was a yeah, it was it was crazy that I couldn't believe it when I got the update that Chris had won. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it was it was nuts. I uh, I had it on with like five minutes left. I'll have to admit this to Chris. So obviously, I thought it was awesome the whole Mark Davis story, and and he's gonna win, and he's doing it the Mark Davis way, and just slowing with him with the with the Cinco style, I mean, just it could get, and I like with five minutes left, I was doing something and I watched it and I literally with like three minutes left, turned it off. And then Justin Lucas texted me like, how freaking awesome was that? And I was like, yeah, like really cool that, you know, Mark Davis still's got it. And that I like the carryover weight that he didn't burn a 32 pound bag. And then have to start over from zero that like that bag actually meant something. Now I thought that was a great move. And he's like, what the bleep bleep are you talking about? And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And he's like, freaking yeah. Chris Lane won. And I was like, hold on. And I went back and I was like, Oh my gosh. Cause I was literally like turned it off with like two minutes left in the round. Yeah. Dude, that was, and that happened at a minute and a half. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. That was, that was an epic day. What are your best at like, okay. You're, you're a fan of the sport. Absolutely. Bassmaster, uh, MLF, whatever you want. Yeah. Let's name your top endings in the sport that you can that you can think of right now like if you were to name your top five endings top Top five final days like just stuff that sticks out where you're like i can't believe that guy actually freaking did that it could be a day it could be the last minute fish any of that stuff yeah um well i mean the first one what you you what'd you say no go well i mean the first one that comes to mind because it was me I mean, I hate to bring me into this, but I, cause I don't want to do that. That's where I was but. going with first. You want me to go there? I'll go there first. It's gotta be the, the, uh, Conroe. It's gotta be Conroe, man. I mean, that was a 14, 14 pound deficit. So 14, 14 pounds going into the final day. I mean, that was in, in uh, the leaders had to, to struggle and I had to catch a big bag, and it, yeah, that was probably one of the craziest endings in a fishing tournament, as far as deficits. Um, I don't know if there's ever been a lead that big, or uh, yeah, deficit that big to win a tournament. It, has there ever been? I don't think so. Well, how big was Randy Howells on Gunnersville? Mm. Hold on. We have this thing called the internet that apparently is functioning. By the way, if it does kick you off, you're still live. So just X out. Otherwise, you'll just indefinitely be live on my live stream. Um, how would how would we find that out? Uh, you could just look up the third day who was leading. I can't even remember who was leading that one. You've you've got it. Yeah, yours has to be the biggest, doesn't it? 
Yeah, probably. I'm trying to think of some other awesome ending tournaments. Um, so here's what comes to mind for me. The Boyd Duckett Lay Lake Classic when he has that fish eat him yes. on the freaking final day in the mat and it's like under the boat and he Dude. swings on it and it's like a six and a half. It was like, a, yeah, it may have been an eight. I remember no that. No one knew who Boyd Duckett was before that. He was a rich businessman who fished the freaking tour yeah. occasionally in the opens. That was it. So that tournament... I can't remember who was leading going in the final day, but Boyd, uh, I was there. That was my first classic to go to, 07. Really? And, yeah, that was the first one I went to. And, uh, yeah, he was punching, like, right at the end. And I think he was flipping a chigger crawl on a carrot stick. It was. Chase. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, he was punching and – Dude, he got the buy in the the music to go with that to win the tournament. I think I watched it a thousand times. Like that was like they just played that perfect. I mean, that was that was epic. You're you're right. That was an epic ending for sure. Um, I mean, there's been so many close calls. That was a really good one. I'm thinking the classics after that. I mean, talk a hero. Okay, that's got to be. I knew that it. Made the number. One, the classic of, of Wiley. Yeah, that's got to be number one. Yeah, that's got to be number one because he did it three times. It wasn't just a fish. He did it three times and consecutively in a tough tournament and into final day, and, and the sea dudes were watching him. Takahiro's got to be number one. And then, yeah, and then he had the words. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, that was an epic ending to a tournament. I mean, the big tournaments, you always think of the, the end. Those are, like, super special. Like oh, a yeah. Season tournament. Justin you know. saying uh, Edwin at Grand when he went up. That was the classic where they had the bass track, and then the dude told Jason, Edwin's got 28 or whatever, and he freaking saved that deal and ran up there and caught 28 on the final day. That's got to be in the top five. That's the top five for sure. Yeah. The crazy but thing. It just about depends on whether you're talking about days or whether you're talking about moments because Chris Lane's deal was a moment. Yeah, that was a moment. That was a. Oh, oh, I ro Bobby Lane winning red crest on grand last year. Yep. That's gotta be a moment. Yeah. That was a moment for sure. That was like 30 uh, seconds left. Yeah. That was a buzzer beater to win. To win the Red Crest, I mean, there's there's a lot of them, uh, but that, I feel like in ours that, that they're they're like more moments because they're they're live stream, so you just you get that you get that moment. It's not like a you know a, a huge story to it. It's yeah. just like a, a buzzer beater moment. That's two thousand three cool. classic Delta. Yeah, that one I never mean, that, give that, up. Yeah, that one's that one's special for sure. Is that number one? Is Ike never give up number one? Now, what? how important no. was that fish? Did he win with that fish, or was that just an, a deal that Ike manufactured? I, I never understood how important that one fish, the never give up fish, actually was to him winning the tournament. I think it was pretty important, but I don't know what he won by. But the number one's got to be Talk. Talk's got to be number one, because that still gives me like chills going back and watching it. That was like, like some weird voodoo stuff, man. Dude. That was other, that was like, that was supernatural. You know, you know that tournament was the, it was the, you know, the start of the, you know, he was catching them on that balsa plug. But after mm -hmm. that, Lucky Craft, you know, they came out actually, got a bunch of them on my wall. Do you really? Lucky Craft came out with the, the BDS plug, which has been like probably one of my favorites. That's what they came out with after that because they didn't have anything, and he they wanted to you know make a a bait that was kind of similar to that balsa plug. So they came out with the BDS too. But so that was their answer to Talk's classic winning bait on Wiley because Talk was a big Lucky Craft guy, but was throwing a balsa. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if he was sponsored by Lucky Craft. Then probably. I think 
but right after that, I'm pretty sure that's when they came out with this because they were like the, all the BDS because the you know it looks kind of like a balsa plug, but it's not. But you know it's fat and yeah, that's when they came out with that. But yeah, Tox Tox moment was pretty dope. That's number one then. Yeah, dude. Okay, so number one's talk. I mean, if you're talking about dramatics, you got to put Bobby Lane's in the top three. It was four championship, four $300,000 in the last yeah. minute to win by ounces. Second. Yeah, and it, it, it was one of the most dramatic finishes because he had waited, twi- waited twice, had one more way, and it, you know, and it went. And it went. But, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, you think about the big tournaments first, right? You don't think yeah. about an Elite Series tournament as much or a BPT tournament as much, even though those are special. But those, like, once-in-a-lifetime tournaments, and they're, like, those moments were, you know, those those are highlighted more for sure in our brains. But... And and there's probably a bunch more that we don't even realize, but it's just because of the advent of live and the coverage that we have. Yeah, you know, I mean, this had to have been a bunch of, in the '80s and '90s. Yeah, I mean, I think about like I'm trying to think of like the elite tournaments that you know, but they just none of them really pop. Uh, out. One, the one that pops out to me is uh, Toledo Bend, Jacob Peroznik gets on a freaking seven pound bed fish with five minutes left, has to go, gets it to go on the last cast and wins. Yeah. I need to watch that one again. I, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen it actually. I mean, I just remember covering it. Like I remember him coming in and being like, dude, like there she was. Uh-huh. I looked at the clock. I was like, I got 10 pitches to this thing. And on the nope. 10th pitch, it ate it. And it, he called and came in. Don't yeah. you think before like the, the live and stuff like when it was just the tv shows and they could like actually make it dramatic it was more dramatic to us other than like just the live coverage yeah so jeffries when he ran the show was a huge proponent of everybody knows who won now with live and it needs to be a recap show but i really don't give a damn even if i know who wins i i like the dramatic music and the who's even if i know who wins i like it like it's a last second free throw every single time like i like the show i like how they put together the show with the dramatic music and the whole nine yards i wish that's something that we would do that the mlf would do even bassmaster would do again because that yeah like the talk of hero just going back to that you know like the the music that was playing and Mm -hmm. he hooks up and it's just like yeah that's forever like captured but yeah, the music. And they still do a great job with the shows, but it's just not as dramatic as it used to yeah. be. Yeah, I like I like the the music, mate. The music, like the you know what I'm talking about the old school, the old Bassmaster music, the the like, intros, the intros. But like the it's kind of I don't even know what the music's called. It's like almost symphonic, yeah. or something. You know, it's it, that's it's pretty sick. I love I that. I'm trying to find. There's one. Like oh, 2006 no. had the best. The first year of the Elite Series had the best intros that just jacked me up. Oh, yeah. They fired me up. The ish, ish, the first tournament at, at Amistad, when he lost that bed fish. Okay, so I watched that a couple months ago where he was like losing that bed fish and then he caught it. Or he may have went to a different one and they had that music going. And, you know, that's when he said, you know, the, can you get you some of that? You know, <laughs> yeah. can you get you some of that? Yeah. That was a good one. That was a really cool ending to a tournament because he had a fat sack on the last day and won it. Um, There's only nine on this. Yeah, I like that one, man. And then Steve Kennedy at Clear Lake when he was – that was dramatic because he was throwing back all the Giants. That was 07. And, and he ended up winning the tournament even he after he threw back all the fish. 
Yeah, that was wild. I remember. Uh, that, could you imagine doing that before? No. No, I couldn't imagine. Like, he's just laughing and having a good time, you know, typical Steve. And I'd be, like, throwing up. I think I found it. One second. Oh. Yeah, like, I love the way that they do this. All right, I'm going to share the screen. We might get flagged. I don't really care. But, like, dude, like, they start out with giant sequoias. Don't talk during this because it'll... Uh, but I'm going to share the screen. And I'm going to share the audio so people can hear it. But this is just, like, the opening to Steve Kennedy's event. They don't do this anymore. Watch this. It's a paradise, especially for someone who loves the outdoors. From the Sierras to the coast, big vistas, big sequoias, everything in Northern California is on a big scale. We're going big right now, in fact. We're on Clear Lake. What we're going big on is bass. And guess what else? You're coming with us because it's the third stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Golden State Shootout. <laughs> Way to start a day. It was just that that that, that they're just they're just good. Just I good. mean, it gets you going. Like you're ready to go catch big bass after watching that. I just want to run through a wall right now. I may stay was, up all night and watch them. Oh, dude, I do that too. There was one that I'm trying to find. It was like the year that Skeet was trying to go like Angler of the Year in Classic, and it was like a one minute montage of just ski race. I don't know if I've seen that, but yeah, it was probably in 07, somewhere around there. I think it was 09. I think you keep, yeah, watch it. I think you keep blocking your uh, audio with your finger. Okay, sorry. There you go. You're back. Yeah. The ish the ish one was good. That was which one was that? That was the one at Hammerstaff, the 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 first elite tournament ever. I watched it a couple months ago and when he caught that giant at the end off off that Toro tube, that was pretty dope. I actually bought some Toro tubes after that. Oh dude, we gotta watch this intro too. This is a badass intro. I forgot about this one. <laughs> Hold on. You could hear that pre that first one? Yeah, I could hear it good. All right. This one might be one of the best ones. I totally forgot about that. I'm so glad you brought that up. All right, you ready? Don't talk. Here we go. Here's a guarantee. You've never seen anything like this one. The greatest bass anglers in the world have qualified for the most extensive tournament series ever. And it starts today. This is the most incredible lake I've ever seen. 31 pounds, 7 ounces. It's unbelievable how many big fish are in this lake. I can think of one. It's going to be something that's just freak of nature. Good fish. Oh, it's a giant. Oh, it's a big one. 31 pounds, 10 ounces. The adrenaline, it's just, it's amazing. Yeah! 34 pounds and an ounce. Big bag of the tournament. That's a seven and a six in about 15 minutes. That's how fast it can happen on Lake Amstead, right there. Bring it! All right, we're going in the jungle now. Come and give me some of that! Yeah! On what may be the greatest yeah, tournament right lake in the world. Welcome to Amstead. Dude, if that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Dude, they got to bring something like that back. I mean, if I were in a tournament circuit, it would just be all that. Just, It's just awesome. I love it, man. Like, it's cool when you're in it, but have you ever tried, like, sharing one of those things with someone who has absolutely no clue what fishing is? You look like a complete, absolute maniac. I mean, you're yelling at a camera, shaking a fish, wearing a NASCAR jersey, and they're like, what? What, what in the hell is going on? Like to us, it makes sense. Cause you understand like, like you especially understand what it takes to get to that level to where you're lifting a classic trophy, where you're lifting a BPT and a lead series trophy. Right. But yeah. think about it. If it was like a dude who like was doing that with like a wheel of cheese and it was like, like the German international yeah. 
grand champion wheel of cheese. And to them, they've spent their whole life like, like, like you have, like we have in the fishing world. But to them, it's all about, you know, culturing the greatest wheel of cheese and they've dedicated their life to it. And they're like, you know, there's like a cheese montage. You're like, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, but there's more people that are fishing now and more people that are watching now. And it's all about TV and this and that. So why not make it cool and make some really cool intros and, I feel like it's kind of gone backwards on that. Like that was, is, is that I mean, because of the live? Like that, do you I, think? No, I just think it's because the people who are putting it together, they just don't, I don't know. I don't know who was putting those together back in the day, but dude, that was like next level. The other thing that I live for is the final day classic intro. The, yeah, super wanna, the, it, the intro and then the super six intro. I don't even know what it's like now. Is it the same? Is it well? I mean, the super six intro, like it's on the on the stage or whatever you're talking okay, about. Okay, no. So here's what they do on the final day of the classic. You wouldn't know because you're all, every time you've been to one, you've been fishing in it or won it, so you've been busy. I've never. But been what they the do is so. Either. So the first day, you know, everyone's jacked up. It's the Bassmaster Classic. Everyone has their songs. You come out usually a disappointing crowd on day one it's kind of like eh, lasts a long time everybody's excited to be at the classic but it's not what you thought it would be fair right. assessment as far as the crowd and this it is still the classic it's the scene yeah second day a little bit better you're kind of getting an idea of who might win final day it's the one day out of the 365 days. It's it's freaking packed. The lines are there. It's it's you feel it. It's like when it's like the the sports moment where yeah. there's three minutes like when you're at the OU game and you get it like twice mm-hmm. a year. Like they're like, you know what? OU needs us right now. We're going, oh, when the defense has the ball, we're freaking doing yeah, you're you in feel it. it. You feel it. Yeah. You feel it in the in the air. So everything, every time I've done it as a media guy, um, I, I, I mean, everything's going down. You don't, I, you're not going to get good interviews while the final 10 weigh in. Cause everyone at that point is pissed that they didn't win the classic or they want to see it cause their buddy's going to win. it. It's just not a good time to interview people. If you're in the yeah. media, that's a little foresight on that. Like just nobody's going anywhere. Uh, so I always sneak out with like half an hour left on the final day and I go up to the very top rafters and I get, I get a $15 beer and I sit by myself and I've done it every single year for probably the past eight years. Every single year I I'm done. I'm gone. I don't do anything. I go up to the very top freaking row on the backside with an ice cold beer on the final day of the classic. That's awesome. And they're, you know, they weigh in the 25 and then they take a minute break and they cast and, to see it. and they do the freaking video. And it's the six minute video of the classic. And it's, you know, what, what is it like in the classic when they do that deal when you have to go in and do like the slow head up and all that stuff. Is that weird? No, it's not weird. Cause you kind of know, you know what it's about, you know where it's going, but yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. That's, that's pretty sick. I, I, I definitely love that. That they, that they do that. How long does that take? So what you weigh your fishing on day two, you're in contention. Yeah. You're in contention. They, they, you're, you're dead tired. You probably got an hour drive back to your house. You're thinking about, everything but being there you do the interview you talk about your day you talk about what it would mean to win the classic you talk about this and, and they're that. asking you this stuff like do they make you say stuff over and over again until it's right or well you're just sitting in an interview room yeah and they're like okay so tell me about your day or tell me what it's gonna what it would mean to win your second classic or what it would mean to win your first classic what would that change everything and um and then you do a couple little head rolls and you know it probably takes 10 minutes i mean it's not a huge you know ass but i mean you're spent you know at a, at a classic because you know it's just been a long week you're getting up early you're driving to the lake it could be an hour away and then you're coming back and you got to re-rig and this and that so i mean when you see those guys doing that i mean they're they're toast or at least i was but it is cool. I mean, you knew when you're doing them, though, like, hey, this is going to be part of the montage where I'm going to look like a badass right before yeah. I come out, though, right? 
Like yeah, that. yeah. You know, well, you know, it's gonna be for the show slash for that. But yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. So yeah. So who's in there? Is it like Zona or Sanders or just JM guys or I JM mean, who's... guys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Zona and Sanders, they're not there. They're doing you know whatever else. They're they're not in there. It's just the JM guys. But that like six minutes room. to me is the best six minutes of the fishing year. 365 days is the highlight reel before they introduce the super six. Yeah, I could agree with that. It's pretty sick. I love those videos though. Yeah. I like, I like go back and watch them. I'll never forget. There is a Tulsa writer. His name's Kelly Bostain. And, and, uh, when Edwin weighed in that 28 or whatever, 29 sack on grand, we were standing in the very back and it was before the suit. Cause he was way down. Right. Yeah, and he just takes. He had his notepad, and uh, this is no BS. He literally just takes his notepad and tosses it over his shoulder and walked out of the arena. I'm not kidding. It was the craziest response I'd ever heard, ever seen. Why did he do that? Because Edwin just dropped 29 on the scales. I mean, he already had the Jason Christie. Oh, he already had the story lined out. Yeah, and that happened, and it just blew his mind, and he just went. He was done. Yeah, I mean, he came back, but I mean, that was his reaction when he dropped 29. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. I feel like that six-minute montage cost, it makes the industry, just from the people in that arena, probably $5 million. Because all the wives that don't understand what their boyfriends, or wives and girlfriends, yeah. what their boyfriends and husbands do are like, holy cow, this is what he's trying this to accomplish. Cool. This this is cool. This is legit. This is where he could get to. Okay. Let's go. We can buy. Yeah. Let's buy. Okay. You, you need, you need a new Jay Lee rod and reel. You need some, some champ, yeah. some Berkeley champ baits. Have at it, honey, whatever it takes I, to get there. I remember. Uh, so my, it's a, it's a Conroe classic. My, my wife, Kristen, her mom, and some of their, her friends around the area came, and they brought their younger daughters, you know, and they're like, didn't want to go to this freaking Bassmaster Classic. Like, what's this, you know? And, you know, they're probably thinking this is good. They're going with their dad or whatever. They're like, this is going to be pretty lame, you know, and they, you know, they go in and watch all these young guys come up there and whatever, and in and, it, and, in the arena and whatever and then they changed their mind off of it like they were like after that they were like oh this is cool and of course they got to meet me or whatever and i won the tournament so make probably a little cooler but <laughs> like they still they were like you know didn't know what to expect and they go in and they see it all and they're like oh this is pretty cool you know like that you're right i mean if every not every tournament was like that but that that tournament is special and i mean it can change people's minds if they win you know see i was actually people are gonna be like oh you're lying but i'm not i was actually impressed with with the vibe that i got at red crest on grand on the final day like there were a lot of dead periods at it but it was like crisp and i i liked it and i thought that it had potential but i think that and you don't even have to comment on this if you don't want to but me as a fan as someone who's really studied this deal for a very long time yeah there is zero way to compete with history and when Bassmaster opens up with Paul Elias kneeling and reeling in 1982 and Ricky Clun and and Bob Cobb and Ray Scott and Hank Parker and Jim Bitters fish flipping over the side of the boat and Dalton Bobo losing by a dead fish like dude you cannot compete with that because that's 50 years of history. Like the first four or five years, no one gave up flying. You know what about the classic they did, but it was because there wasn't history behind it. It was all the stuff that happened that made it to be that. And you can't manufacture that. So you're already starting from behind and you just have to stick around long enough until you have the Bobby Lane moments and the Edwin moments where he catches them every cast for eight hours straight in Mississippi. You have to have those moments and then stack it up against time in order for it to be meaningful. Is that a fair assessment, Jordan? 
That's a fair assessment. Yeah, I mean, you know, when when our sport started with bass, and you know, I mean, it, that's what I grew up watching. That's what a, a lot of people have grown up watching. But yeah, I mean, you don't know what it's going to be like. It's bass is still going to be there, you know, in twenty years, and we're still major league fishing is still going to be there probably. I guess I don't. I mean, I guess both leagues are still going to be around unless something happens or whatever. But I mean, yeah, the history of it, you know, you can't you can't change the history of the sport and it, it is meaningful, um, you know, to the, it's meaningful to us. And, but, you know, when you get new people coming in, you know, they may not pay attention as much to the, is the history is like, that bugs me nerds like us. I mean, that bugs me that like okay. that, that, that there's no mandatory history lesson for these high school kids and junior bass anglers and stuff. That's the like, one class I could teach is, and, and you could teach too. That's yeah. the one class we could teach in, in high school is bass fishing history. I, I've told this story before. I, I do a Kurt Dove youth camp and it's high school kids. And like, literally they get paired with, a different guy every day. Right. And they like right. all the kids want to fish with Rick Harris, want a Toyota series, good buddy guy on uh hill country hammers on OH Ivy and stuff. He's freaking killing it. But Rick Harris is not Denny Brower. And I think Rick Harris would admit that he's not Denny Brower. And Denny Brower does this camp dude. When they did the pairings, this kid got paired with Denny Brower and he goes, Oh man, I wanted to fish with Rick. And I was like, son, you did not know what you just said. Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, there, there should be a mandatory, but not then. I am. I, am I the old guy? Get off my damn lawn! And now I'm old, and you don't understand the history of this thing. But I think you have to to respect it. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, especially, yeah. I mean, it's just different, you know. I mean, it's different for us because the era we grew up in, and the you know, the fishermen that we got to watch compete or whatever. And, and, and you know, it's going to be crazy in 10 more years or whatever. And you get somebody into it, they're going to be like, you know, if Kevin's, you know, not fishing anymore, they may not even know who he was, which is insane. But I mean, hey, I don't know. It is crazy you, to think about. You brought it up. What's Kevin going to do five years from now? Give me Kevin's give me Kevin's projection for five years. Well, I don't know that obviously. You think he's gonna I, be able I know. Do you think he's gonna be able to stay away from it? I think he is, man. I, I think I think he's not gonna compete anymore. I think it's gonna hurt him. But I, I say hurt him. I think it's gonna deep down he's you know, he's a competitor. He's done it his whole life. I mean, it's gonna hurt me at some point, you know, whenever I hang it up. But yeah, I mean, I feel like for him, you know. I, I know how hard the the road life and all that is, even if you're somebody like Kevin. Um, and, you know, being away from the kids his whole life and, you know, being away from Sherry a lot, probably. It's just, you know. Kids are I growing think, up, though. They're empty nesters, kids, man. He's going to be back in Kalamazoo. He's been busy for 33 years. He's going to be sitting at home. I, catching the same smallmouth out of his pond 11 times wanting well, to freaking go back Kevin, out and kick some butt. I think Kevin's a different guy. I mean, I don't know if he's going to, you know, get involved in announcing. I mean, I could see that maybe doing, doing some stuff with major league fish and mm -hmm. maybe some type of announcing. I could see that. I don't know if that's what he's going to do. He may not, but probably some TV stuff and just do what he's always done and promote his sponsors and, probably stay at home more, not travel around and chase the tournaments. I mean, that's what I said doing. Did, uh, did he ever pull you aside and have a heart to heart with you? Like, Hey man, you're the future of this freaking sport and here's what you need to do. And here's how it needs to go. Or here's some advice that I could partake on you me. having kind of been in the same situation as you were. He never gave me like like a heart to heart like that, but I remember the class, the first class I won. He kind of was backstage. He was backstage after I got off way in and talked to me for a minute. And I can't remember exactly what he said, but you know, he was like, you know, that was just an incredible job, and you know, he was proud of me. And this was before I won, and he was you know pumped up and this and that, you know. And I mean, he didn't have to do that because I mean, I was just this young kid, you know 
fixing to win the classic, but he was like, you know, excited for me genuinely. But mm -hmm. in recent years that, you know, we hadn't had like those, that conversation, but I mean, I think it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be kind of tough, but I think it's, you know, there's a time, you know, when you walk away from it and you feel good about it and that's just the time for him, you know, yeah. I'm just surprised more guys haven't done what he's doing. Like, you know, you, I've, I've heard you talk about retiring and fishing and, like, people don't retire, but, you know, Denny did, and then you, you yeah. see somebody like Kevin doing it. Like, I feel like there's a time when you're not, you know – I mean, Kevin still competes. He still does good in the end of the year. He still wins tournaments. He's won – you know, he won a BPT last year, year before last. But, you know, there's a time when it's like, okay, maybe I need to do something else or – maybe I'm not competing at the highest level now. And uh, I mean, I, I, I just don't know why guys don't like hanging up. If they want to fish tournaments, go fish. I don't, dude, house. I think there's a bunch of them that can't. Yeah. Financially, right. emotionally, like that's who they are. That's who they've been for 50 years. That's the only thing they've ever known. And then also, I mean, dude, you know this, everyone knows this. I mean, it's not, there's a lot of guys who have done this for 30 years up but they've done it for 30 years on a year to year basis. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, you're right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not all like, yeah, they have to, you know, they, this yeah. is, they're making, they're making money and they have to continue to make money because they don't, you know, but, have I it mean, all and, back. and, and we also forget like, dude, you're living a freaking dream. You're fishing for a living. And in other sports, yeah. you're forced to retire because you're literally no longer useful to that organization and the paycheck that they're giving you. But in fishing, you can live the dream for 40 years. So if you're Rick Klon, you're still enjoying the hell out of being out there. Yeah. Fair assessment. If you're still enjoying it, I think there's, but there's a fine line. Or if you're still enjoying it, are you out there a threat and, I know you're a threat at times, and Rick's been a threat. Obviously, he's won big tournaments. So right, it's been amazing. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I guess it just depends. I on know, but you also have to look at perspective. So you have to look at meaning of life and what you get from it. So you're if right. you are, if you're enriching yourself and your life, and it's bringing meaning to you, even though you know that you're not as big a threat as you were to win. That's right. And there's some people that are all about competition. There's some people that are about experiences life enrichment fulfillment i mean there you you can't look at it, it's, it you can't yeah. look at it it's a really it's gray just, area it is a gray area it's just different for me because i just get i get fired up with just as much going to a bfl that i'm going to fish this saturday at gunnersville as i do a bpt tournament or a classic like i that competition like i'm serious i know it sounds crazy but, but you're like, also 30 years old I know, but like when I get done with like the the high level stuff, I'm gonna be like, okay, there's a BFL this weekend on Saturday. I want to go out there. I want to go try to win it. Like I want to be fired up to go fish it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I mean, I, I get it. But you know, teach their own. Everybody's different. But I, you know, maybe this is just the time for Kevin. But it does. Congrat. I mean, congratulations. So I'm 33 years. I mean, it's a freaking hell of a career. It's unbelievable, and and how many events he's won and been the man of the sport for so long. It's just crazy. And has never made a misstep. I mean, he's always represented the sport with class and dignity from the SB Awards to, to the public and what – I mean, the dude is yeah. the consummate professional at all times. I mean, dude, I've seen him, you know, cut up and enjoy a few Bud Light limes at some media events and stuff, but I mean, the guy is always on point. Always. He's always on point. His hair looks good. He's got the I slacks. I, mean, I did a TikTok on it, just talking about the slacks and the, the, the combed hair. You know, I mean, he's just, yeah, he's just the dude. I mean, he, he set a standard. He set a standard for, you know, a lot of guys. I've always wanted to ask you this, and I'm never going to get another late night, probably too. Uh, and this is a conversation. Okay, you have to answer this honestly. This is a no judge. Like I'm pre, I'm pre qualifying your answer. When when did you realize you were good 
When did you realize there was something special about you? When did you realize that you weren't like every other guy that steps on the front deck of a boat? Is it natural? Do you think? Yeah. I mean, have, did you have that moment where you were like, I'm different than everyone else? Yeah. So I did because I wasn't really sure, you know, in, in high school, I, I jumped into some, uh, they're, they're the Bassmaster version of the BFLs. They don't exist anymore, but I pushed those as a uh, co-angler. And one of the local sticks in Alabama, of course, I didn't know who he was, but I got drawn out of his boat. I'm still great friends with him today. His name is Mark McKay. He's one of the, the best fishermen in Alabama. And uh, I, I, I drew out with him at Wheeler, and uh, – I, I didn't win the term. I came in second, but he never gets beat by his co-anglers. I beat him that day. I caught a six-pounder. We actually talked about it at a, at a local ABT tournament this, about a month ago. But anyways, long story short, I beat him that day, and he came in, and he was, like, telling all his buddies, like, you know, this kid's legit, you know, and, and well, like, yada, yada, yada. He wasn't telling me that, but he went over and told my mom. You know, he went over there to my mom. Really? And, and said, look, this I've fished with a lot of people before. This kid's got something special. Keep a rod in his hand. You know, keep keep him doing what he's doing because he's he's going to be something one day. He actually just told me this story like a month ago again because I kind of forgot. But um, so that next year I fished as a boater in these tournaments, you know, and this is a you know, pretty big local trail for the time. And I, I won the points. You know, it, it's 17, and, like, I mean, I, I was just going everywhere, just just catching them, just kind of running into them. Didn't ever get any info, or, you, I mean, I didn't know anybody. So, I mean, I'm just a kid, you know, I'm 17. Like, literally, I have a couple little tackle boxes. Like, my tackle was probably so bad. Like, you would have probably been mind-blown. I would have been mind-blown now, like, looking back. But, like, that year in high school, I knew, okay, I'm I'm competing at the local level. I'm winning tournaments. I don't even know what the crap I'm doing. That was kind of when I knew, you know, I got I got some here. But you you can't ever predict the future in fishing. You know, you can't ever. There's always all of these what ifs. Like, you know, what if I don't make it, or what if I don't catch them this tournament, especially at that age, because you just don't know what your future, you know, lies ahead. Like, you just don't know. But that at a young age, you know, when I was around in high school, like I, I felt like I had something and so, so it was pretty young. Do you think that was natural or do you think that was because of your obsession with natural. fishing? I think it was both. I was really obsessed with fishing. I watched everything. Like I had a chatter. I was fishing as a co-angler with a chatter bait. I don't know. I mean, this was, 2008 i mean the chatterbait probably wasn't even out yet you know like you know viral and somehow i had some was catching out of the back of his boat he never even seen one before and so like i was obsessed with it to that point um and my parents supported me so like there was like i had a lot of the i had a lot of um just positive influence in it too so there's a little, little bit of everything, I think. It wasn't just like I was obsessed with it, but my parents supported me. Mm-hmm. They knew I had something, and I got to do it fairly often, not like taking off school for weeks on end, but I was fishing a lot, you know, on the weekends and after school, whatever. So, Do you feel like you have to work incredibly hard to stay at the top of your game? I know like a Kobe Bryant comparison is everyone was like this, but then, oh, he was in the gym for six hours a day and three hours before everyone and three hours after. Are you doing stuff that other people aren't doing or do you kind of, does it, is it just kind of in a routine now where it flows? It's kind of in a routine now where it flows. Like I don't fish as much as I once did i I still would like to fish every Mm -hmm. day but i can't um but i still like the more i fish the more years i fish the more i've seen stuff i kind of know hey this is how this tournament's gonna go um and i'm not always right but like you know I, i still get a feel for what i need to do during practice 
I need to move here, move here, and just try to learn a little bit, you know, and I, I, I'm more confident too. So, you know, from the start of it, when you don't have all that knowledge, you just don't know. You're just like, get spun out. You, mm -hmm. you kind of worry more. Now I'm not as worried about the tournament as much as like, oh, well, I don't have anything to go to. I'll just go try this to start with and see how it works. And then I'll just kind of, you know, figure it out or try to, but I, I don't put in the reps, but I, you know, I, I still feel like I need to because I'm not as strong and, and as some of these younger guys in, in electronics, you know, my, I felt like in 2014, 15, 16, I was really good with my electronics. Like I was better than, most guys and now i feel like i'm kind of middle of the road hmm. do you not think fishing is weird because you can't look at one thing in a person and say they're elite yeah you can't you 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 really can't i mean you have to be just so knowledgeable and <laughs> like i can't look at you and be like oh you're you're badass fisherman like you just look like a dude from alabama oh, i know what that's what saying. i'm saying you know like there's no there's no body there's no body pop whatever like. or even like a skill set like you could be the world's greatest caster and really suck at tournament fishing yeah you're right I know or really the world's can. greatest boat you could be the world's greatest boat driver the world's greatest caster and the best hook setter in the world and you could finish dead last at every tournament yeah. You could also suck at all three of those things and win a classic and multiple other titles. You're right. There's there's some people that just have that gift, that knack to in tournament fishing that just kind of know when to move and when to stay and this and that. And but a lot of it too goes hand in hand. I mean I mean, you can't like make the perfect fisherman, but if you're a really good caster, you're probably gonna affect the move, move your finger real quick. If, you, if you're a really good caster, you're probably going to catch more fish than a lot of guys. Yeah, that's a fair yeah. point. But if, I mean, if you're casting where there's no fish, you're still not going to catch anything. You're right. I'd rather be a bad caster around fish than a good caster not around fish. I mean, I'm taking that 100 times out of 100, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I would too. I mean, I hadn't really thought about that. But yeah, you're right. I, I, I think as a whole mechanics are overrated i agree my mechanics aren't that great to be honest with you like i mean there's times when i get in a rhythm but it takes me a long time to get in a rhythm like when i started out this tournament to send me and i'm like casting around i'm like i told my official i'm like you know i backlash a couple times and this and that and i'm like you know that he's like yeah this this you know, this makes us feel really good when when we come and we see these pros, you know, mess up a reel or rod or my reels clicking, going crazy, you know, and I'm like, I freaking suck. Like, how do I even catch any fish? Like, this is embarrassing. It's because you're so, around them. Yeah, uh, you know, so. I promised I wouldn't keep you for an hour and we're at 54 minutes. I'm sorry, dude. You said two hours, but yeah. I didn't say two. Okay. Hey, uh, let's wrap this up. I'll let you get back inside. I do want to know about the money badger. What the heck is this thing? Is it worth it? Am I selling all my wiggle warts? Is it replaced the rock crawler? I mean, Berkeley's done well, a hell of a job at promoting random new baits. And the stunner's like actually like freaking kicking butt. They just want to bass I'm, just, release I'm still shell shocked from the Frenzy series back in the nineties. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so the Frenzy series wasn't what uh that was before my time. And yeah, they weren't you too guys, are, You guys are coming out with some good stuff. So hit me hit me up with the money badger. Yeah, so I got one right here. It's like a chartreuse shad type. Oh, deal. dude, you have everything just sitting right there. You got the what we swear well, I, I, didn't. I just pulled I just pulled it out because I'm going to Gunnersville and I was getting some baits that I like to throw. Okay. Oh, but yeah, this is the money badger right here. And, you know, it's got kind of a, a different bill on there, but the, you know, it's not like a normal bill you'd see on a crane bait, but this one dives 7.25. This one dives like 12, 13, maybe even a little deeper, 
but it's got like a really hard thump to it. Um, and it, you know, a lot of Berkeley baits that are pretty much all the crank baits you see, they got that weight, like that weight right mm -hmm. there in the front and they've just dialed it in. It's like the Fritz side where you can cast it really, really good. That's important in a crank bait, but this one's got a really hard thump. Um, it's really similar to like a wiggle wart, you know, rock so it's a crawler. cold water, slow crank, get it down in the rocks and let it do its thing bait. Let it do its thing. And I don't even know if I can show this one, but I'll show it anyways. Yeah. But this is, I don't even know the crankbait, what, it, what we're going to call we'll it. Here, we'll even go further than that. Are you going to get in trouble for that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's but, not out uh, yet? It's not out yet. Um, this is just kind of like a prototype. Um, and it's going to be like a six-foot runner, which, Ooh. you know, it's it's very sim DT6-ish. Um and the one thing though that I like, you know, a, a DT is a was is a really good crankbait, a DT six. But there's things about it that I don't like that a lot of people don't like, and I'm hoping this one can replace some of that. You know, just as far as like the durability, slapping it in grass, if it's got the same kind of action, and you get some different colors too, like you can get some clear translucent colors out of it. Um, like this one right here is like a ghost. But it this is a really cool crankbait, and I'm caught some fish on it, but hadn't got to throw it a ton yet, but I'm going to do probably this week. But, uh, yeah, it's a cool-looking plug. But, yeah, they've done a great job. Yeah, looks awesome. Colors and stuff, so. So worth picking up a couple money badgers. The money badgers is definitely... Um, Was that a, yeah. a scientifically designed bait, or were there guys that had their hands in that? Gross. Um, I don't know if guys had their hands in it or not, but I think it was kind of like, okay, you know, everybody's coming out with these wiggle wart rock crawler type baits mm -hmm. that, you know, Ozarks just let's come out with our own and make it a little bit unique and you know. Sorry. So, and yeah. I think I saw your minners in Walmart the other day. <laughs> Did you the minners, the the champ minners? The champ minnow. I, I was like, I was like, son, of, son of a gun. Them. That looks like an actual dang minnow. <laughs> champ minnow, it, it won a, a Toyota series this past year. I'm just saying, you get those in Walmart, that's when the royalties really start coming in. Yeah, I mean, Walmart's the best place to be. I wish everything... I mean, I was just talking with that about someone today. Look at Fletcher Shryock sunglasses from five years oh. ago. <laughs> Dude. Walmart well, can make you or break you. Walmart the king. Anybody that's working for Walmart right now, distribution, hit me up. We got some J Link. Products. What all do you have? What all do you have? Signature series. Let's run through this. You obviously have your rods and reels. Your J Lee, the silver and yellow. I got the rods, the reels, the combo. The combo. The J Lee combo has been my my hottest item. And um, that's available where, like, re I just just. Online Bass, retailers, Bass Pro, well, I, yeah, Bass Pro Academy. Quite a lot of, quite a lot of Christmas gifts are a J Lee combo, I would imagine. Christmas, yeah. Father's Day, that type of thing. Yeah, you're you're probably not wrong on that. Um, yeah, that's that's been my best best seller. The combo from Abu, it's a really nice combo. Uh, <laughs> I got the Champ Crawl. Yep. Uh, the I Mena. got. The minnow and the, the the four and a half inch swim bait, which they actually just came out with a couple of new sizes. Yep. It's like a, um, the champ swimmer, and then All I got right. the line, the the, the X five and X nine. Um, oh, that's your perfect. signature series line. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I was not aware that you had a signature series line. So that is that is fluorocarbon to your specifications. It's not fluorocarbon. It's braid. It's the oh, it's braid. five carrier, five carrier braid and, and nine carrier braid, but it's just the high vis. So it's their, their. You know, when I first got in with with Berkeley, I was fishing all this crazy color line, and they're like, "What's this all about?" You know, I'm like, "Man, I love this high vis." And I so remember they, that. So you were yeah. throwing that at Cayuga when you finished second. That weird, that high vis colored, uh, spinning line braid. Yeah, and the first time I ever got that got the high biz where I said I'm never going back was in a open in 2014 at Amistad, 
and I was dropping on fish in 50 foot of water and I was using green line and I couldn't ever tell when it would go to the bottom and I was just getting mad. I said, I'll never use this braid again. I'm going to high biz. So that's why since then I've been using it. Anything else that's that you currently it. have on the market signal? You don't have glasses? I did have some sunglasses. Not anymore. Most you don't have any clothing? Oh, you've got your this lake sucks stuff. How many you dude, you have made a king's ransom off of that, haven't you? I sold we sold a lot. We sold out every time in a day and we've gotten more and more. But the deal, you think, yeah, you're making a lot. You look at the numbers and you're like, Man, that's that's a good we made, you know, we made some money last night, but it's not as much as you think because the the people who are making it got to get a little bit of a little bit of that and then the shipping on it is is pretty high so the shipping and then you know we got to buy the product too so you're buying it it it, it, it you know so you're only getting just a little piece of the pie yeah, yeah, yeah. so you're not really making a lot of money off of it even if you're i mean if you sold a hundred thousand dollars worth of clothes you're probably going to get about twenty thousand yeah, 20 or 30 probably. Maybe. Yeah, something like that. But so it's not like you're, it's a killing but Are they in stock? How would you are they in stock now and how did you come up with that? Well, they they they're not in stock back in stock. If they were, they would be gone. Um, no, I'm just kidding, but they they do really sell really quick. But Kristen, my wife, she was uh, you know, she always hears me complaining coming in for the tournament. <laughs> it's like sucks. You know, you <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. cut you come in from an open or whatever, and you come back from the Chesapeake Bay or whatever, and you're like, God, this place freaking sucks. That's a hundred percent. That's the exact thing you say. And it could be the greatest fishery on earth. Everyone could be yeah. smashing 30. You're at Clear Lake and you're like, God, this place, this place sucks. sucks. You can't catch anything. So mm. she always heard that. She's like, We need to come out with this. And we got so we got a couple stickers made, you know, thing we're like we need to do some apparel. We've been wanting to do apparel for a long time, but it was never like one of those things with apparel. It's like, I, I know my own brand's not going to just sell out. Like everybody's yeah. not just going to want a Jay Lee hat or a Jay Lee hoodie, but we made some of those as well. Some people want that, but we are like, what's universal that people would want. And she was like, we got to do this. So we did it. And that's you know. fantastic. That's really smart. Yeah. I, uh, before you get the next, batch in stock let me know so i can be on the ball to order it i just okay. spent 50 bucks on a carl jockamson 2023 classic t-shirt and it came in uh -huh. like i watched the whole thing he's like i hey, might these are a little tight so if you're large go with an extra large so i ordered the extra large yeah. and sure enough fits like a glove nice. uh, so i'm gonna wear that to the classic um, nice. yeah I'll, I'll give you a heads up i'll give you yeah an give me a heads up because i'd like to uh, i'd like to support i would also like to mention um, your brother's got you by a lot. Like I said, you've been on BTL a couple times over the last year. Matt's been on, uh, two months ago. Yeah. I watched we, that episode. Yeah. We hit the algorithm with that episode. It's over 20,000 views right now. So, uh, Matt's tripling up your episodes currently. So that's good. Yeah. Hey, he's, I mean, he is, he's a lot cooler than I am. So I doesn't surprise me. 20,000. Uh, Matt, I mean, we did talk for two hours, though. Is that your? That's that's not a that's not a. It's not a BTL I, record. The BTL record is Kellen Ellis, who is the man who hid in a ghillie suit to to catch Mike Long snagging bass. Are you shitting me? Yeah, he came in studio and told the whole freaking story. That's the only person who's beaten Matt. Yes, on BTL. Yes, and this one was two years ago. That has 42,000 views. You can do it. It's called BTL Bass Talk Live with Mike Long exposed author Kellen Ellis. And he spends an hour and a half in studio talking about how he hid in the California shrubbery with a handy cam to, to catch Mike Long snagging the fish. I can't believe Matt's second to him. 20,000, and it's only two months ago. We hit the algorithm, dude. It was freaking crazy. And it was I a really he, good. It was a really good episode. You just hit the Matt Lee algorithm. We did. I also named it Natural Talent Long Term Plans and Odd Plastics. 
that's a good that's a good name it is what are you gonna the name o- this one? the Wait. odd plastics could cover a variety of are you different... are you gonna name this one two dipshits talking about old bass masters no no this is just gonna be uh this is just gonna be a random live at night so i just wanted to uh like I said, I wanted to test the feed with someone I enjoyed, and I always enjoy shooting the I breeze. I enjoy with when you when I yeah when I saw Matt Pringle pop up my phone, I'm like, this is one of two things. Because I mean, you occasionally listen to BTL on the road, which warmed my heart. I I, I don't occasionally listen to. It. I listen to it pretty often. Do you I have a do. do you have a BTL hat? Dude, I don't have any swag. I don't have any BTL swag. Listen, I've got I've got a Richardson one twelve. Okay, are you a Richardson 112 guy? I am. That's my that's my jam, man. Okay. This I is love- a patch hat. I've got I've got like six or seven of these left. I'll I'll just send me your address and I'll send you one. And I'll send you a sticker. I'll send you whatever you want. I mean, you're, I you're feel Jordan honored. Lee. I feel I feel honored. Oh, I just need to send you some stuff too. You don't nah, need to buy No, 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 no. I'll I'll, no, I'll, that's, I'll how it it. that's how it works. That's how it works. You can you need to save your money. You need to save your gas money. I do. I am fishing nine opens and paying forty thousand dollars over the course of a year to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> With yeah, no you payback. Don't be, so. You don't need to be buying apparel. Yes, uh, Jamie well, yeah. Sizemore. I can. I can go get the uh, the Got Five One Twelve in there. He he hooked me up at the uh, at the Texas Classic. I met Jamie. He's got a little thing that says Got Five. That's cool. Yeah, I like your new hoodie too. This one, the day four. Yeah. I've got a bunch of different hoodies. So that is that is Frank Scalish. You know, you know who Frank Scalish is. I know Frank. Yeah, Frank. That is Frank Scalish, uh, hooked up streamside on a uh, steelhead, but the rod is clearly loaded to the cork, which it then says on the sleeve. And then Frank, the Frank cork. said, "I don't care how much it costs. I want the highest quality hoodie there is. I'm from Northern Ohio. We don't do cheap hoodies up here. I like so it. it's a it's a like sixty eight dollar hoodie. I like it." Available in the BTL merch store. Go to BassZone.com. Click on Shop BTL. Go to the BTL merch store. All that is currently available. Will be. Uh, Go ooh, buy some merch. Until I close it, yeah. I love merch. Frank gets all the all the day four merch. That's just a that's just a little give to Frank there. I like that. I like that. Except Jeffries has to have his, his cut, of course. Of course. It's like the mafia, man. Dude, Jeffries, he, he just he's always just ruthless. He is. But I will admit when I've had internet issues, I've called him like three times in the past day. What do I do? He's always gonna <laughs> answer. He's always you can always count on him. Yep. Jordan Lee, thank Dude, you very much for it, jumping man. on at night. Yeah, we covered a variety of topics. That was good stuff, as always. Dude, yeah, I'm still same. very envious of your shop. Playing uh, you know. It's badass shop. You win two classics. I mean, that's the only one of the thing. top five anglers in the world. You yeah, should you have can. a badass shop. You kind of. I mean, that. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Remember yeah. when I first did the in the in the dorms with you and Matt? You had like one room. You had a couple pictures of you guys from freaking Auburn oh, and some yeah. BFL trophies. Was, that was, was that literally all you. Yeah, you had. You guys shared a tackle room. Did I came come for the to, night. Did you come to Auburn with us? Yeah, that dude, uh, Greg, who did the C maps. Yeah, yeah, was yeah, there, yeah. and we did a whole in the dorms thing with the Auburn oh, team. Yeah. Remember, yeah, you yeah, had a room yeah. downstairs and half of the tackle room, yeah. and you can and you, Matt just had a disaster. Can you find that footage? Oh God, yeah, it's on a tape. It's on a tape somewhere. Dude, we need to replay that because you at the time you had a couple BFL trophies. And a couple Auburn things, and that was it. We need to. I need to find that, even if it's just for me to reminisce on. I don't think you've been to the classic yet, had you? No, I think Matt. Was Matt fishing. had. Matt was fishing that year, maybe, but probably not me. No. Yeah. So I mean, between then and now, you deserve the shot. No, well, I appreciate it. I, I'm I'm envious of your room, hmm? of your media room. Dude, this is this has been a long time in the making. This is studio. We call this a studio. I mean, it's studio, not media room. I'm yeah. envious of studio. So I've, I have I have some things that are not in, including I am getting Dean Rojas pants <laughs> that he wore when he caught 45-2. Oh, that's pretty special. 
I'm not sure if it's special, but we're going to go with it. And then I'm also <laughs> getting, <laughs> I'm also getting, uh, he's, shadow uh, box? he's just going to send them to me. I think I'm going to be required to box Dean's pants. <laughs> You're going to don't, don't tell anybody else that I will. And then, uh, I'm getting a Fred Kentawi Jersey. He was sponsored by, remember, uh, Orange County Choppers, the TV show on Discovery Channel. Oh yeah. He was sponsored by Orange County Choppers. It's I watched host. that. I watched that uh, episode. Our was that episode. not was that not a good episode? That was a great episode, man. This, that dude's okay. really cool. This chaps my ass a little bit. The episodes of people who aren't Jordan Lee, Gerald Swindle, Kevin Van Dam, they do not get the same number of views on YouTube. They the the podcast download listeners very loyal. But they don't get the, oh, I want to listen to that. They're the freaking most interesting ones. You think I'm going to have someone boring that no one knows on the show? No, I've got freaking the the most interesting people on the show. And the fact that they're a little bit more unknown means you should click on it because at some yeah. point no one had heard of Jordan Lee. And they're like, who the hell is this guy that's on a podcast, that's on a show, that's on a TV show? And that's how you yep. expand your horizons and learn about more people. I totally, I couldn't agree 100%. The, the the awesome thing, the best thing I heard from that episode was him going to Alaska and, and guiding out there and then somehow coming back out here and fishing for the FLW tour and getting all these crazy sponsors. Like, dude was like, had the sponsor game figured out. But, I mean, yeah, that was a cool episode. I, I, that was That was a good listen. All right. You're the man. I appreciate it, Jordan. That was good times. Yeah, I enjoyed it, dude. Good luck at you right. fall. Oh, thank you. God dang it. It starts. What is today? Today's Tuesday. When do you have to go there? When do you have to leave? Friday. Hey, how many I days get... of practice do y'all get for that deal? Five. We get Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and half a Wednesday. And it's been off limits to fish for 28 days, but info doesn't go off limits until Saturday at dawn. Hmm. So. Oh, it's been warm it's a, here. Unseasonably warm. It has. The, the the dogwoods are blooming. My buddy just texted me. I just seen it popped up in my. <laughs> AKA, my, my, if you're not looking for spawners, you're in trouble. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I don't know if I've ever seen a dogwoods bloom in February. Is that true, though, that the fish hit the beds when the dogwoods start blooming? Or is that an old wives' tale? It's an old, old wives' tale, but hey. Hey, the, that's usually when it happens. It usually don't start to like the last week of March, April. That's what I was thinking. And it's February the 20th and the dogwoods are blooming. That's what I was just, thinking. Yeah, you keep that in mind. Did you fish the uh did you fish the deal on Gunnersville that was recently that they just had? No. This past weekend? I was in Florida, but I'll be there. I'll be there this weekend. Was that the same weekend? Were they on top of each other? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Because that was like the same this week. weekend that you almost won the classic in college. Yeah, it was actually this week. But yeah, yeah, it's it's lining up. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. like, "Hey, listen to what he's telling you." Yeah, I smell what you're cooking. I I don't know what that means. I'm just saying it's just been warm here. Really warm. So. That would probably be Carolina rig post spawn fish. <laughs> now you're just now you're just overthinking it i hear you uh, all right dude have a good night all right see you post see you, all right that was uh jordan lee big shout out to jordan uh dude over the last four or five years i think jordan has really done a great job of of uh taking the torch of professional fishing and putting his name and stamp on it. And uh, I really respect what he's done over the last couple of years. Uh, I mean, from the beginning of his career too, but for a while it was just, oh, shucks, gee, I'm a kid who's winning everything. And he's a good dude. Much appreciated. Like I said, I called him. I said, hey, let's just go, go live, see if I can keep a live stream on for an hour. And I have. So, And also thanks everybody for tuning in. So tomorrow, uh, big show for tomorrow. Chris Lane, last-minute victory in the BPT. 
Uh, and we're going to have Chris Lane on to talk about it. One of my favorite guests, like I said, I can't talk about Chris Lane without talking about him catching a raccoon with a pool skimmer following either one of his wins or Bobby's wins. They were celebrating. So, all right, guys, uh, BTL listeners, fans, you guys are freaking awesome. Thank you for jumping on last minute spur of the moment. If you're listening this on iTunes or the replay, there's a real easy way to catch this live folks. When you subscribe to BTL on the YouTube channel, click the little bell, the notifications bell. And then when I go live, because I, like I said, this studio is in my house now. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, whenever I'm here. I don't know when I'm going to go live. If something happens, it happens. Uh, But that's how you won't miss it if you want to get a part and get in on some of the lives. So BTL tomorrow, which would be Wednesday, February 22nd uh, with Chris Lane. Folks, have a lovely Tuesday evening. I'm going to throw some music on. I haven't done this for two days, so I keep forgetting how it works. Everybody, stay safe. Have a good evening. We'll talk to you later.